I usually don't season or flavor my steak, I flavor my cutting board. I also prefer seasoning the grass before biting into the cow after that. Wait, was this an April Fool's joke? Nope, he was serious. Hello internet, welcome to Food Theory. So someone sent me this video a while ago, and as with anyone who's ever cooked a decent piece of steak, my immediate reaction was to refute it. However, the late Carl Sagan once said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. However, after thinking about it for a bit, I decided to put this to the test to see if this method is something that I would take, or if it's just a horrible mistake. Hi, my name is L, and welcome to the channel. Come for the memes and stay for the food. Maybe. Possibly. Now, most of us cook our steaks by seasoning it with salt and pepper and then searing it off. I say most of us because, let's be real, some people will still fail to do this step, and if you're one of those people, I have a video on how to cook steaks, so go check that out, thank you very much. In the video, Adam only coats his steak with oil, opting to leave out salt and pepper before cooking. He states that the reason for this is because salt doesn't enhance browning. And the idea that salting meat immediately before cooking will enhance browning is, as far as I can tell, a myth. Well, while this is technically correct, it kind of misses the point of salting. He then goes on to reference an article by Kenji from Serious Eats for the best time to salt your meat, which is a bit strange because he didn't salt his meat. More on that later. First, let's get to the experiments. So what I did was pretty simple. I got myself four beautiful pieces of filet steaks. Why? Because filet is high on the tenderness scale while being low on flavor, which makes it ideal for this experiment. If a particular method is downright bad, then there's not much in the way of figuring this out. To keep things consistent, each of the steaks received a sprig of rosemary, a clove of garlic, and 25 grams of unsalted butter. They were all salted with kosher salt and seasoned with pepper but at differing times. The first piece was seasoned right before cooking with the butter, rosemary, and lightly crushed garlic being tossed in right at the end to finish it off. Pretty much your run-of-the-mill steak. Also, the pan was thoroughly cleaned and dried before cooking each and every steak. For the second piece, I seasoned the pan and tossed in the steak before seasoning the uppermost side. It was finished in a similar fashion to the first. The third was salted 45 minutes earlier and peppered right before cooking. As you can see here, there was a visible color difference between this steak and the others. It was also finished similar to the previous two steaks. And finally, the fourth piece saw no seasoning when going into the pan. Instead, I seasoned the chopping board just like Adam did. I even grated the garlic because that's what he did as well. I then evenly coated the steak on both sides in the seasoning and let it rest. I mean, why would you just season one side, right? Steak goes on top of all that stuff, its heat will soften the rosemary and melt the butter and take the edge off of the raw garlic as it all just sits there and rests. And yes, all steaks were cooked to medium rare. After all the steaks had been rested, I sliced them and placed them on a separate board. To keep things even fairer, I enlisted the help of my dad to taste the steaks as well. He had no idea which steak was which, nor what had been done to any of them. What we noticed was, Steak A was nicely seasoned, had a good crust, and was great to eat. Despite having the same tenderness and crust, Steak B was considerably less flavorful and was fairly bland. Steak C was distinctively more flavorful than any of the other steaks and also had the best crust. Steak D was fairly similar to Steak B but with a little bit more flavor due to the taste of raw garlic. However, the beefy flavor was quite watered down and it was also the wettest. As per my expectations, this would have made steak D a dead giveaway, so that's why I needed someone else to taste the steaks as well. Overall, the steaks were ranked C, A, D, and finally B, with C being the tastiest. Both D and B were very close. Unsurprisingly, the worst two were the steaks that were seasoned just before it went into the pan, as well as the steak that only received seasoning via the chopping board. Through the power of basic testing, we can conclude that seasoning your chopping board just isn't great. As we would do to any good piece of steak after cooking, I believe we can lay this nonsense to rest. You don't actually save any time, still have the same amount of things to wash up, 
and end up with a considerably worse piece of steak. Why? The claims may have been extraordinary, but sadly, the evidence was just below ordinary. Based off our results, the best time to salt your steaks would be at least 45 minutes before cooking. Or, if you don't have the time, then seasoning it right before cooking would be your next best bet. Now the thing about referencing an article is that it doesn't make sense in referencing it if you're going to ignore works by the same author on the same topic. Kenji has also written another article about the myths of cooking steaks. And under myth number 5, it goes into detail as to why you shouldn't season your steaks only after cooking. He also has yet another article where he goes into the specifics of seasoning foods at different stages. Here, he literally states that, for certain types of foods, specifically meats, I know that salting beforehand is essential to the final flavour of the dish. For those of you who don't like reading articles, the TLDR is, seasoning after the fact means that the salt only ends up on the surface because the salt hasn't had time to penetrate the meat. This means that it's easily washed off, leaving you with flavourless, bland, sad beef underneath. But that's it for today my friends, and I'll be seeing you guys and girls next week for more videos just like this. In the meantime, if you haven't done so already and just want to subscribe or follow me on my socials, you know what to do. Links to everything, including the articles mentioned in the video, will be in the description. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers, so let's push for that because that'd be pretty sweet. Also, since you're already here, let me know how you guys cook your steaks in the comments down below. Or you can just say hi because it helps with the YouTube algorithm and it helps more people find my videos. That's basically all I have for you today, and I'll see you guys and girls and all you beautiful people in the next video.